Craftopia has been getting a lot of attention lately, and it's one of those games I was definitely on the fence about because it sort of takes a bunch of cool shit from other really good games and smashes together like a hundred features into a new game that they're hoping has something for everybody. And uh, in my opinion, usually those kinds of games sort of fall flat because they do a bunch of things really shittily rather than doing one thing very well. But when I first saw this game, I immediately was reminded of Breath of the Wild because the art style is pretty clearly inspired by it. But it has Terraria's crafting system, then it has Starbound's kind of world system, but then it has Pokeballs that used to capture cows and like sheep and shit, so like Pokemon kind of. So I guess the question is, what even is it? And I guess it's sort of all of these things. And I guess the second question is, does it do all these things well? And I guess the answer would be, it does a majority of them with reasonable success. But before I get into that, I wanted to mention that this game is in early access, guys, and it has a lot of problems. So I'm going to try to base my review off the core mechanics and the gameplay, even though parts of the game were so plagued with issues. They were straight up unplayable. So when you first enter the game, it's basically exactly like Terraria. You start by creating a character and creating a world and naming it. Now, there is a little customization and the characters are admittedly pretty adorable. The beginning zone has some NPCs and they tell you all the shit that you need to know, but the translation is clearly done by Google Translate. It is absolutely absurd and it often doesn't make sense. Fortunately for you and myself, the game is very easy to understand regardless of that. So you start by punching trees to gather some basic resources like wood and stone, and then you craft some basic pickaxes and weapons and some standard items like a workbench and a fireplace to cook food. Because like I said before, there are survival mechanics in the game, so you need to make sure that you eat to replenish your health and satisfy your appetite, or your stamina will deplete and recover very, very slowly and you'll lose life a little bit quicker. This was the only survival mechanic that I actually noticed, and it sort of seemed more like an inconvenience than anything else, but it wasn't too, too bad. The first thing that really stood out to me as like a problem with the game, because I was, I really did enjoy almost everything about it, but the sound is so, so weird. Like when animals take a step, it's extremely loud and you can hear it from regardless of how far away you are. It's just like really overpowering. But then other sounds in the game are either completely nonsensical or just not there at all. So like when you kill a sheep, it's pretty obviously a very badly recorded dude mimicking a sheep. Like when you kill a deer, I'm pretty sure it's the sound of a door shutting. It makes no fucking sense at all. And when you ride most vehicles that are 100% silent, but like other things are absurdly loud, so I think the developers recorded most of the sounds themselves the night before. It was uh, clearly rushed, and uh, as funny as it was, I, I hope they improve that for the final product. There is a progression system in this game. There's actually a couple, but the main one is through the use of an item called the Altar of Civilization, which requires you to provide a certain amount of specific items from the time period that you're in, to then progress to the next one and unlock new and more advanced items to craft. The variety within the items is pretty insane and it's quite entertaining in itself. And even if some of the mechanics don't always function like they should, you'll still get a good laugh from the absolutely ridiculous things you can do. The weapons and armor are fairly similar to Minecraft or Terraria, but you eventually unlock vehicles like Back to the Future's hoverboard in two different styles, then eventually you can craft a Tron-style motorcycle and a helicopter. The vehicles are fun, but they're stupidly difficult to control. You're just gonna like spin all over the goddamn place completely out of control. They're almost not worth using because you crash so much, I actually felt like they slow you down, aside from maybe the helicopter. You heard me mentioning a Pokeball earlier. There is a Pokemon-style system in this game, and it's all based around an item called a Monster Prism, which is a shameless ripoff of a Pokeball, but it's way more inconvenient and difficult to use. This was definitely one of the wonkiest systems in the game. It probably worked like 25% of the time, maybe 35. Most times I would throw the Pokeball thing and it would either just like bounce off and fly somewhere, or it would like not catch the animal even when it was really low health after like five attempts. And then sometimes I could recover it after it bounced off, 
and then other times it would disappear, which again is a bug, guys. And like I said before, if you don't want to deal with any kind of technical issues or glitches or bugs, do not buy this game right now. Now, once you actually catch the animals, you're given some really weird options. See, to progress your items and move to the more advanced crafting, you need electricity in the form of batteries. And to get these batteries, you need to capture animals with a Pokeball and then build a generator and make them run to produce batteries until they literally die. And then you capture more and you do it again. It's um, not disturbing at all. It's great. And aside from using animals for energy, you can also force them into romantic relationships with each other with a very complex device and then eventually breed them. Then you can set up a livestock farm and milk them and then breed them more until you have an empire of inbred cows delivering you all the milk you could ever want, which is really important and a great source of food for your character. Now, there is a leveling system in this game. You do level up, and every single time you level up, you unlock a new talent on your talent tree. They're pretty interesting. I went for mostly defensive and mobility-based stuff, like double jump. I think that was the most helpful one. But I also went for health recovery, because sometimes shit hits you really f***ing hard and you get one-shotted. But as you progress through the different eras of crafting, you also have the choice to leave the island you're on and venture into one with more plentiful resources and more difficult monsters to kill. Every island also contains a dungeon, some of which function like a Legend of Zelda one-player dungeon, and others function as time trials and give you some kind of objective to complete within the time period, like shoot all the targets or whatever, some shit like that. Now, even though you have the option to leave the island, it's not necessary for progression in most circumstances. You could technically stay on the first island and make it through every era and craft every item available in the game right now. I did find some hidden diamond on a higher level island in a hidden cave, but quickly realized that those items that use diamond ingots are not even implemented yet. I also noticed that the performance of the game, which was already sort of on the fence, it was kind of bad, it was running okay, but... It was especially bad depending on the island you're on, with certain ones just being downright unplayable. Now, I have a powerful computer and I did try multiple times to optimize the settings, but I had little to no performance increase. And it is what it is, it's an early access game and it's just not very well optimized right now. The highlight of this game is undoubtedly the crafting system. It's really detailed and it's very good. I've heard a lot of people comparing it to Minecraft, but it's far more similar to Terraria, I'd say, if you guys have played that. There's not as many items as there are in Terraria, but I think they can get there eventually. But it's all about figuring out what each different crafting station can produce, and then combining materials to then create new materials that you can then use to craft whatever specific items you want. There is definitely grinding involved, but it's fair, and it never felt overly punishing. Uh, it was like exactly what I wanted. I was able to craft within a reasonable time frame, and though sometimes it took a bit to figure out like exactly what the f I was supposed to do, you may not have that same issue if you're smart and good at crafting games. You learn as you die too because of dumb shit you did. I learned very quickly to build my base up high so that big ass things would stop killing me while I was trying to get water or craft stuff. I also learned that certain items were worth the grind, but others that seemed cool were actually really big disappointments. But at the end of the day, Craftopia feels rewarding. It's annoying as shit sometimes and it makes you want to punch yourself in the gooch, but I kept going back and playing more and more, not because I was making a video, but because it was addicting, genuinely addicting. When Terraria first came out, I spent so many sleepless nights building my base in a treehouse and unlocking new shit to use, and this game isn't quite there yet. But with some minor optimization, it could be very close. This is a game that tries to do too much. They without a doubt bit off more than they could chew. But they've also done a very good job at making each aspect unique. For a game that stole so much from other games, there's a lot of creativity here. They may have stolen many of the systems that they've used, but they've used them in a way that we've never seen before. I mean, Come on, conveyor belts with cows powering electrical devices to create batteries? Weird animal mating rituals? Breeding humans? I mean, what other game has all of that? 
And if you're someone that can't tolerate bugs, like I said before, this is not the game for you right now. But if you want to experience something super weird and different, I highly recommend picking this up. Please let me know what you guys think about Craftopia in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. As always, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe, my bro.